do come from the Basque country and over the last four years their simple and evocative guitar music has taken them to number one in the Spanish pop charts. Here their sales are only excelled by those of Bruce Springsteen and Rick Astley. They are however as yet unknown in the English speaking world. Surprisingly, perhaps, Duncan Do have their first UK release on the label that's bought us The Jesus and Mary Chain, My Bloody Valentine and Meet Whiplash, Creation Records. We think that Creation is the best la label 
for us in England because it's very special level. It has groups uh, very special that we like very much as out of love. When when Franco was in the in the power, you see, uh, there was no music on the streets and on the radio. You can only hear a few things, no? So since he is is dead, uh, that's been a, a big opening. And now the people like to hear music. They they buy records and they go to concerts. The groups started to to play and to record it and everything. We think it's a kind of injustice because here we listen at a lot of groups, uh, in English groups, no? But in England there are no Spanish groups, so it's this is. We think it's a kind of imperialism, or I don't know why. But no, I don't know what. I I know why, but I think that uh, perhaps in the 60s uh, our music was not at the same level that English music, but now. I think they are completely equal, no? So I don't know why uh, Spanish groups uh, don't go to England as English groups come to, to Spain.
Denton are a group scarcely anyone in Britain has heard of, yet their extraordinary fusion of Arab, Celtic and Mediterranean sounds has made them, over the last ten years, one of the most important of European bands, and in Arabia they are particularly successful. Snub talked to dissident and spokesman Uwe Mulrich in his current place of residence, Madrid, about the group's development and work. We started in 79, ten years ago, in India where we stayed almost two years working for Hindi film music in the studios in Bombay and in uh, 83 we came back to Europe after we went to uh, Tangier, Morocco, lived there for one and a half years and since then we're more or less settled in Madrid, Berlin and now we just made a bridgehead in New York last summer in Britain, the little we've heard of Dissidenten has been exclusively your sort of Arabian, Moroccan work. How did, how did you first get involved with the people you worked with on those records? Well, I lived in, in Tangier in this very remarkable household where Timothy Leary and uh, William Burroughs, Paul Bowles, Eldridge Cleaver, maybe some elder viewers might may remember these times. and. Um, through some musicians there, I got really interested and stayed for one and a half years to prepare this project, knowing already a few things from from Berlin, you know, like tonality and certain uh, certain structures. And um, nowadays, it's possible to meet people who have tape recorders or radios everywhere in the world. And if you have that, then you're linked into the international information if you want. And there is a mutual assimilation from musicians from this place and, and us uh, to 
do something new that is not uh, this, this uh, uh, ethnological point of view. Because ethnology is more like the, um, the complex, guilt complex of the white man. You know, after having it ripped off and destroyed, you go there, put it in a museum, you know, like this one here. This is from Egypt. Now, and what does, it, what does it do here except sit there? There's nobody living in there. There's nothing uh, mutual happening between, between the two cultures. And it's happening today. The world is, has become like a village more or less. If you open your ears, you can hear a lot of things and uh, uh, people, a lot of people can hear you. You can do something on a mutual basis without being the white man who comes there.
Realize that the time 